Old Grognard says, Let's learn how initiative works in 2nd edition AD&D. The text I'm referencing for this video starts on page 53 of the 2nd edition DMG. There are a few different methods for determining initiative in 2nd edition. Before I get into explaining them, I should cover some things that are relevant regardless of what method you use. A combat round in 2nd edition is one minute long. The DM can say it's longer or shorter under special circumstances, but the default length is one minute. Initiative is rolled every round, so there isn't a predictable round-robin turn structure. Speaking of turns, you will sometimes see the word turn used as a unit of time, such as a spell duration. A turn is 10 minutes or 10 combat rounds when used in this way. The standard method for determining initiative divides the combat round into four parts. In the first part, the DM decides what the NPCs will be doing. The DM doesn't declare their actions, the DM just figures out what the NPCs will be doing and remembers this for later when it comes time to resolve actions. So next, the players declare what they want to do. This doesn't have to be exact. Things like, I attack the ogre with my battle axe, or I cast fireball into the middle of them, are good examples. Page 54 of the DMG has descriptions defining what counts as an action and what is minor enough not to be one. So once that's out of the way, it's time to roll initiative. Each side rolls a d10 to determine who goes first, with the object being to roll low. On page 55, table 40 lists standard modifiers to initiative. These only apply if the whole group or party qualifies for them. Sometimes this works against you, but this also applies to negative modifiers as well. So after rolling our d10s and adding modifiers, whoever rolls lowest goes first. If there are more than two sides, then each side rolls and goes in order from lowest total to highest. The last part of the combat round is resolution. Attacks and actions are resolved in order of initiative. If there is a tie, the actions go simultaneously, so it's possible for two characters or groups to kill each other at the same time. If the conditions for an action have changed, the DM might let the player change targets for attacks, or at least cancel their action if it makes sense. The second method for determining initiative uses basically the same process, but instead of using the modifiers on table 40, you would use the modifiers on table 41, which is also on page 55 of the DMG. These modifiers are crunchier and apply to each individual creature. This is where the speed factors you see listed with weapons in the PHB come into play, along with casting times listed in spell descriptions. Weapon speed factors work by adding the speed factor to your initiative. So the higher a speed factor is, the slower the weapon attack is and therefore the later it happens. For example, if the players roll a 5 for their group initiative and one of them is attacking with a short sword, they would add the short sword speed factor of 3 to their initiative. This would have them attacking on an initiative of 8. If a character has a magical weapon, they subtract the plus from the speed factor. So if the character with the short sword in the last example instead had a short sword plus one, the speed factor would be reduced to two, and so they would go on seven. If a spell casting time is just listed as a number, it works the same way as a speed factor. So for example, if a character in the same party as the short sword wielder casts magic missile, they would add its casting time of one, to their initiative roll of 5, and therefore they would go on a 6. If a spell has a casting time of 1 round, the character spends the whole round casting, and the spell goes off at the end of the round after everything else is resolved. The third method is individual initiative. It uses the modifiers on table 41 just like the second method, but each character and creature rolls a separate d10 for their initiative instead of using a group initiative roll. Regardless of the initiative method used, if a creature gets multiple attacks from having different appendages, for example, claw claw bite, they take all their attacks on their initiative at the same time. If a character gets multiple attacks from being a high level warrior, then they would do their first attack on their initiative, and the second attack would be after everyone else does their first action. 
if both sides have high level warriors then they would take their first attack on their initiative then after everyone's first action is completed they would take their second attack in the same order and so on groups i've played with have always used the individual method for determining initiative with the dm either rolling once for all the monsters or rolling for them in groups in actual play when it came time to resolve actions the dm would usually ask something like does anyone go on one two three etc when your initiative number was called you would let the DM know, and then you would resolve your action. After that, the DM would keep going until everyone resolved their actions, and then the process would start over the next round. If you've played 2nd edition, what method did you use? Did you use any house rules that you would like to share? Is this whole thing confusing and you'd like to ask questions? Please make use of the comments section. And with that, it's outro time. Bebonimus P. Catsworth and I would like to wish you a wonderful rest of your day.